Good morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you for joining us in our prayers this morning. This is the day of the Pentecost, the 50th day of Easter, and the first Sunday of ordinary time, the season of increase. This begins the long season of the church calendar. This is the time in the northern hemisphere when crops grow. It's the time when new animals appear and they multiply in number and size. It's the time when babies are baptized and when we harvest and preserve food of all kinds. This is the first day of ordinary time, a season of grace and wonder known to the ancients and completely at home in our delight. O Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom. You have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. It is a wonderful season. This is also the celebration of a single, singular occasion, the Pentecost. It is the day of promise. A day Jesus promised would come. A day he told them to stay for, to wait for. When the Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. It was a singular occasion, one Luke described vividly and dramatically in the second chapter of his book of the Acts of the Apostles. A singular occasion is like a birth or a baptism. It's like those shared moments that people remember together asking, where were you when Kennedy was shot? Where were you when they landed on the moon? Where were you when 9-11 happened? Where were you when Obama was elected? Where were you when you got the vaccine? Well, it's still early and we're literal creatures answering Centennial Hall, the doctor's office, Fred Meyer. Later, maybe that literal place will be a helpful mnemonic and so will the physical feeling. It stung a little. Or I didn't feel it. Or, I got sick for a whole day. Luke's recollection has elements like those. They were all together. There was a sound like a violent wind. But as with Luke, it's the emotional state I'm asking you to recall. How did it feel? Was it like all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Or was it, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back. Or maybe, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You know, the vaccination was an unexpectedly important occasion in my life. It was more important than I thought it would be. When I'd made my way through the line, when I'd rolled up my sleeve and taken the bump and waited out the pause and then gone home, I was overwhelmed with relief. I felt a weight lifted, a fear abated. 
that I would somehow spread contagion through accidental and unwitting exposure, that feeling was gone. Someone I know, a person dear to me, my daughter Lucy, said, I cried, and the person who gave me the shot thought she hurt me. But I said, no, it's just so amazing. We made it through all that. We were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But some others sneered and said, you must be high. No, let this be known to you and listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. Luke described a singular day, the 50th day of Easter. All the disciples were gathered in one place when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a wonderful day. This too is a wonderful day. It's the 50th day of Easter in the 21st year of the 21st century. And it's the first day of ordinary time. It is ordinary time in the second year of a pandemic when between 3 million to 10 million people have died. Our understanding is that uncertain. Yet for us, there's been a reprieve, a vaccine. Now while others are saying our bones are dried up and our hope is lost, we are cut off completely. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. This is the first day of ordinary time, a season of grace and wonder, known to the ancients and completely at home in our sight. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And Jesus said, All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said to the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth will take what is mine and declare it to you. And just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. 